Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we will discuss on principle of transparency and best practices in scholarly publishing. As you can see, these are the scholarly organizations, COF, DOAZ, WAME, OFSA. So what are these? These are like Committee on Publication Ethics, Directory of Open Access Journal, Open Access Scholarly, Publisher Association, then World Association of Medical Editor. So this scholarly organization they do you know uh, kind of scrutiny or they, they they evaluate the journal or publisher and uh, if those journal or publisher they made certain criteria or guideline then only they uh, they allow them to be a part of their organization through membership and timely they do monitor all these you know criteria whether they are uh, or the specific guideline which they have you know mentioned they are following or not so what are these guidelines? What are this uh, you know principle of transparency? If if as a uh, researcher or author we will able to understand this, then it will help us to select uh, you know journal which uh, which uh, you know are following or which are you know uh, maintaining certain you know ethical uh, let's say uh, guideline and uh, it will help uh, you know both ways uh, to the you know researcher to also you know not to waste their work in a predatory journal um, in a, or you can think of publishing in a predatory journal. So what are the principle of transparency as you can see what journal or publisher they need to maintain is the first one as you can see here is the website. So this journal website should you know kind of uh, should demonstrate or should showcase all the information related to the journals and uh, let, let's say oh, they should be talking about the aim and scope of the journal or you know about uh, the publisher also and uh, this ISSN number has to be uh, there and it has to be clearly mentioned in the uh, journal web page both print and electronic uh, if they, they are you know printing and they have the electronic version both uh, ISSN number has to be mentioned in the journal then the name of the journal that is also has to be unique and uh, it should not be kind of confusing or let's say there are a uh, journal uh, with uh, let uh, you can have two or three journal with the common name so how you can able to distinguish uh, which uh, journal is uh, uh, let's say is indexed in particular you know um, or indexing body like scoopers or web of science or SCI so why assessing this ISSN number you can you know you can search with the ISSN number and you have to uh, kind of relate or you have to uh, you know kind of uh, uh, track it via ISSN number and if if at all uh, it is the case where there is kind of duplication of name if you found and you, you get confused so uh, the, the best way to search is via ISSN number if you are looking into book book series then isbn also you can think of so all that sort of information has to be available in the general web page or wherever you know uh, the uh, about the journal is being mentioned that they have to mention all the details then about the peer review process also they have to uh, kind of uh, they have to mention how they are you know reviewing uh, this uh, uh, article when when a author or a individual is submitting their article so what are the steps they are following in the whether it is blind peer uh, review process or you know or a peer review with uh, with a set of certain uh, let's say the journal is following their own certain guideline in, in the reviewing and what uh, tentative time it, it might take all that information they, they should be giving in the journal web page then uh, they should be giving the ownership and management information as well where uh, who is um, you know who, who is the owner of that particular journal and the man uh, management uh, bodies of this particular journal in their web page and uh, the organization structure also of the journal so that uh, potential authors should not be misled or, or about the journal or let's say uh, kind of duplicate data should not be present in the journal uh, so that so as to avoid that clear cut information has to be given in the general page and next is the governing body as you can see 
So again, here uh, they should give all the detail related to the governing body, uh, mentioning the uh, editorial uh, member of the journal also. So journal editorial board has to be given and uh, the, with the full name and affiliation of all the editor, associate editor, let's say they have reviewer board member also that information has to be available in the general web page. Then editorial team contact information again, a uh, kind of similar detail. They have to give all the detail related to the full editorial information about their affiliation editorial office and you know full address of this editor, whomever are, are you know part of this journal. Then copyright licensing, the clear cut information should be available uh, in the author guideline where. Uh, let's say uh, you know copyright holder name on all published material that uh, that that they should be you know providing and uh, if there is some licensing information that also they need to give in the web page and uh, common uh, creative common licenses or let's say specific licenses requirement if it is there so uh, that also they have to give uh, those sort of information and whether after final accepted version or published version, uh, what sort of, uh, you know, uh, like uh, copyright uh, uh, related agreement author need to sign, whether they can able to, uh, let's say, uh, you know, um, go for repository like their institutional um, uh, repository, whether they can able to, you know, uh, save a copy in uh, that repository or not or other you know like 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 profile like research yet or not so that uh, they those sort of information has to be available in the general web page so that the author will decide uh, beforehand whether to submit their work in that journal or not then about the author fee also if let's say if the journalists uh, have hybrid mode of public uh, publishing so they have to give clear cut information about uh, if they want to go for open access, then the publication fee and what is the amount of the fee and uh, they should not be giving uh, such information where by paying you will be, you know, the paper will be accepted or let's say uh, uh, the re reviewer will, you know, uh, process will be speed up that if those sort of thing is given, then you can think uh, that journal is uh, kind of predatory journal or might be uh, a predatory journal and that to be avoided. Uh, if they are not charging any amount, that also information also need to be available in the journal web page. Then the process of identification and dealing with the allegation and of research misconduct. So it can be of uh, plagiarism, citation manipulation, fabrication or falsification or let's say uh, before and when a you know uh, author or a researcher has submitted a data and before you know assigning to the reviewer if if somebody being get caught under this sort of uh, research misconduct so what step they need uh, they they are following or that need to be followed that information has to be available in the general web page moreover post publication related to mis uh, research misconduct if some something is happening so what uh, the journal will be doing on on those sort of allegation so on that also we, we have discussed uh, the COPE uh, guideline that is there on the published article post publication or uh, research misconduct uh, I have kept it in the I, I button you can go through that uh, video as well. So the COPE guideline they have to follow or they have to adopt uh, the COPE guideline or other set of WAME or you know other set of guideline. And then is the publication ethics, which already we have discussed. But again, uh, let's say about the general policy on authorship or contributorship, or let's say how the journal will handle the complaint and uh, those sort of allegation. Then policies on conflict of interest and uh, uh, general policies on data sharing uh, and reproducibility and ethical oversight and then we have here is intellectual property then post publication related discussion which already have covered and correction so all uh, sort of you know information and what policy they are following what policy the journal or the publisher is following that uh, has to be available in the journal web page so that uh, whenever uh, a, you know author 
plan to submit uh, they should be knowing about all sort of policies uh, so that uh, they should uh, nobody should not be you know uh, no one should not be telling that uh, the policies were uh, not available or it is not clear to them and uh, you cannot charge them with uh, uh, those sort of allegation so uh, that is uh, you know both way kind of uh, thing where the journal as well as author they will be uh, they should be having all the sort of information and then publishing in a, a schedule also like uh, they have to give that information whether they are going for quarterly publication bi-monthly monthly or let's say biannually whatever sort of publication or schedule they are following that uh, information or about the period periodicity also need to be given in the journal web page then assessing of this so whenever we are talking about uh, you know after you have published your article whether you are able to assess that article free of charge or you need to pay some amount uh, uh, to download your own paper or let's say uh, assess by uh, your you know your colleague or some other you know researcher around the globe whether they can able to assess or not so uh, that you know sort of information also has to be available in the web page because you want uh, your article to be available free of cost to the reader and uh, unknowingly you have uh, you know um, made the publication and now uh, you are into trouble that uh, you are not able to share your document so the policies related to all sort of you know open access let's say or or general poli policy or related to or the author guideline you have to follow it clearly and th those information has to be available in the general web page so the scholarly publisher or the journal they follow this set of uh, instruction and you will find all this information whichever we have discussed in their web page if any journal is not following that then uh, you can uh, you know come back recheck you can write to the editor and if uh, you are in um, dilemma then better to avoid uh, submitting your work in those set of journal then archiving also uh, like uh, the journal uh, whether you know uh, the preservation of your ss where they are you know archiving your work and what sort of databases they are indexed with so all your published work will be kind of uh, you know archived in uh, let's say uh, we have discussed this scholarly organization also where few of them are like supporting open access where the, the copy will be saved in DOSJ as well and uh, let's say uh, PubMed Central is there then uh, you know uh, there are like uh, if we talk about elsewhere where the science direct uh, they are also you know you can able to assess uh, the published article uh, or you know elsewhere published article in the science direct so where uh, this um, archiving will be done that information also you should be able to get in the general web page and uh, then revenue resources if any anything is involved like the business model revenue resources author fee subscription uh, preprint institutional support organizational support advertising all that uh, information should be clearly stated and uh, and should be available in the web page then advertising journal sell state their advertising policy if relevant including what type of uh, content they are advertising and uh, that being linked uh, uh, scientifically to you know to the readers or let's say reader behavior and uh, that uh, are displayed at or uh, whether they are displayed at random and this advertisement should not be you know related in any way to editorial decision making or shall be kept separate from published content so this this they have to note whether you know a uh, few journals they might be following that advertisement but it should not be uh, kind of uh, you know coming in between uh, the decision making or let's say uh, the work that you have submitted in that process so then direct uh, marketing also this is also kind of um, uh, marketing activities that are there in the uh, 
uh, let's say the journal or the publisher might be following so uh, targeted audience uh, many of the time you people might be receiving on uh, those sort of uh, like survey uh, via survey also they try to approach uh, you know but it is not that uh, uh, that you feel that those journals are you know meant uh, for uh, what you for your particular work or you have to submit in uh, those sort of journal because they are reaching to uh, you um, you have to evaluate uh, you can come back uh, and you have to see the COPE guideline or this uh, you know transparency as we have discussed this all this point whether they are following or not if uh, they are meeting all this uh, you know transparency principle then uh, you can think of and uh, again there are few other criteria like indexing if uh, in uh, many of the places like if we talk about uh, like in India in, in, in case of India scenario we need to publish our work in you know UGC care affiliated or indexed uh, journal let's say the you know Scopus web of science Again, when we're talking about web of science, this has to be SCIE, ASCI, SSCI, or um, or Scopus index. So that also you have to see those indexing related information also nowadays available in the journal web page. But what you have to do is you have to cross verify. You have to go back and you have to check it in the Scopus website and clear it uh, where you can find out the information related to web of science indexing. So once you uh, have the confirmation that the indexing information is um, well and good, whatever you think is okay, then you can think of uh, submitting work in that, that particular journal. So hope uh, uh, this uh, particular video you know helps you for selection of your you know journal or publisher. It can be for journal. It uh, you can apply the same thing for book uh, uh, series also or book chapter when we are thinking of book chapter you have to look back which series it is being indexed or a part of uh, which series it is you know and then uh, you can follow even uh, the conferences also you can see uh, what indexing they are following what sort of information they are giving in their conference website and uh, you can um, you know uh, tick uh, all this uh, transparency principle whatever is uh, being mentioned over here so it will help you basically to select the proper you know platform to submit your work so thank you for watching please do like uh, this video and uh, share among with your colleague and uh, if you have not yet subscribed please subscribe to my channel thank you for watching